All right. So you're in excruciating pain. It's chronic. You can't work. Sometimes you can't even get out of bed and make it to the bathroom. You're in such pain or you get sciatica and are popping pills all the time in order to try to be able to function and be out of excruciating pain. That's where I was just six months ago. All right, so you're in excruciating pain, it's chronic, you can't work, sometimes you can't even get out of bed and make it to the bathroom, you're in such pain, or you get sciatica and are popping pills all the time in order to try to be able to function and be out of excruciating pain. That's where I was just six months ago, and I had it before, about a decade before that. Back pain, Back pain, back pain turns into sciatica down the leg as well, or it can appear anywhere in your body. And so I want to be able to do this interview in order to share with you what helped me the first time uh, a decade ago when I had excruciating back pain and the same method helped me, kept it away for 10 years uh, until six mm -hmm. months ago when I had my mother go to the hospital and I had all of these stresses. And I was, just to give a little testimonial here, I was advised by doctors that I have a herniated disc and a, and a slip disc and, and I, I may need uh, all sorts of uh, work done. My father suffered from this and they wanted to operate on him. And in fact, he went to the hospital to get operated on. And just before the operation, he decided I'm not doing this. He left the hospital and he's never had to go to the hospital again. Wow. But that was again, mind over, uh, mind yeah. Over, yeah. over pain, but he's a Holocaust survivor. He's an extraordinary man. I, on the, on the other hand, am a very simple, uh, average person. Oh, and simple. I, he's uh, simple. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I found my help from my listeners who were telling me to use a book by Dr. John Sarno called Healing Back Pain. I had someone purchase the book for me in New York and it was brought over here to Israel. And we're talking about several years ago when it was harder to get things over here. And it literally changed my life. It cured my back pain, cured my husband's back pain, cured my girlfriend's back pain, who was on crutches, and she's a top professional as well. Oh, and uh, everybody that I know that have used it, uh, really just, it changed their lives. And there are videos on the internet that uh, if anybody wants to write me, I'll be happy to send you from Howard Stern, from John Stossel, showing the effects of Dr. John Sarno's uh, mm -hmm. method. And uh, now we have somebody who helped me in this last uh, bout that I had, the second in my life, and that is our guest, Dr. Tova Goldfein. She's a doctor of chiropractic and re rehabilitation. She's a specialist in self-healing, in chronic pain, and autoimmune disease. She has a podcast as well. And welcome to the Tamara Iona Show, Dr. Tova Goldfein. Why don't you tell people first where they can find your podcast after this? I'm sure well, it's a, it's a Facebook Live. It's tw two times a week I go live on Facebook. Um, and I have, a, I have a YouTube channel for both of these broadcasts, one's in Hebrew and one's in English. And each week we interview doctors and authors and movie directors and people that have self-healed from anything from cancer to multiple sclerosis, to chronic pain, to arthritis. Last night we had on the show a gentleman from England who healed from dystonia, which is this contraction of the muscle that can cause in every part of the body. It was an unusual thing. And he he lost he lost a child in like utero and he had to bury the child. Like just stories like this. So it, it can happen from trauma. You know, it can it can come up from trauma, but it can also be um, something after surgery that doesn't heal because the brain, whenever there's an injury tomorrow, the brain remembers and records it. The muscles record it and we go on our life and then something happens. And if we are not, you know, facing the monster under the bed, so, as we say, that pain will come back usually in a similar place or show up somewhere or the body will react to something and it'll affect the immune system and it'll cause an autoimmune um, so on and so on. So, so the, the, you can find it on Facebook under TMS Roundtable. TMS was a term that Sarno used 
for a, a psychophysiological condition, a condition that's physical, but um, the cause is coming from a psychological reason. And there's a scientific way of understanding that when there's feelings we're repressing, the brain interprets that as a threat. I mean, this is the science because uh, the Sarna's work is nothing short of science. And um, since he passed 10 years ago, it's been an enormous amount of research about the mind-body connection and the neuroplasticity, which is another level of, of what I helped you with and what you understand. And the book is now in 30 languages, the Sarno book. There's a couple of movies about this, about Sarno and the work, which you can get. I can send you a link. Um, and some are like five, $10. They're, they're profound. You can heal. Many people do heal themselves. If they need help, I'm the I'm the shalcha, I'm the shaliach to help them help themselves. Because ultimately, we doctors don't heal. We help people body heal themselves. And I'm big on that when, because, you know, first of all, God cures. Second of all, doctors don't cure. Doctors know a little bit and they do the best they can. Okay, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to grab maybe like around three minutes of your time, because I want to explain to people, I, I'm a very practical person. And whenever I hear a lot of this mumbo jumbo and this like, ah, healing and ah, meditation, it's I like, breathe, breathe. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, okay, let's just let let's be practical here. Um, but, but I, I'm also a very open person at the same time. And I listen. And if I can accept it, I accept it. If I don't, then I don't, but at least I listen and, I, and I'm aware. So when I was reading Dr. Sarno's book, uh, you know, again, I'm not into all the psycho babble and, you know, it's just stress and, and it's, you know, this is what is uh, hurting you. I'm like, okay, right. Uh, but as I was reading his book, he made sense. And I just want to explain this all to you as short as possible. And he's saying basically that when we have this back pain and so many millions upon millions of people suffer from back pain, that he says, don't tell me that because you had a back injury back in high school, uh, that for the rest of your life, you're suffering chronic back pain. He says, if you break the strongest bone in your body, which is your femur bone in the top of your leg, your thigh bone, basically, that takes around three months to heal. And so if your back is injured, it should take a certain amount of time to heal and that should be it. But when it keeps coming back over and over and over again, this basically is a sign of stress. And this, you, this is what really spoke to me that this happens to strong people, not strong and people. sensitive, strong and sensitive people, the people who are deeply connected um, to themselves in a way and perfectionist people that are, you know, high achievers. This is the kind of personality that develops this kind of chronic pain. And also on that note, chronic pain and disease is not normal. We don't live life and expect to have chronic pain. And, and it's, it's, it happens for a reason. There's a reason, sometimes a physical reason. If there is, the body gets better. But there's a deep, deep emotional relationship you have with your pain, with your cancer, God forbid, you have a relationship and healing that is where we're meeting people every day that you meet healing cancer and MS and on sorts of chronic pain. And underneath the pain is, is anxiety. And what's anxiety? It's called being human. We have this condition called being human. So anxiety isn't bad. Thank God I have anxiety when I'm driving on the road on cliche. It's called focus. So anxiety when we know ourselves, and this is what I taught you, Tamar, when we understand uh, how, we, how we're triggered, then we can say, ah, there I go. I'm worried. There's that worry card. I'm not sleeping tonight. My father's in the hospital, you know, the COVID, you know, the politics, you know. So we understand our triggers. And if we can be aware of them, they won't turn into a cycle of chronic pain and TMS, which is called tension myonora syndrome, not important. And, and then and then it becomes a chronic cycle and the brain is perceiving a line is coming, a line is coming. And all it is is tomorrow's husband's coming home and he's got, you know, and you've got to go visit your father in the hospital and your brain is triggered and it's protecting you with spasm in your muscles and an enormous amount of, of inflammation. This is kind of the cycle. 
So I, I wanted to explain that when I read that this happens to strong people, because I always thought of myself as a very strong, tough person. I, and he explained why is that a, 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 a very sensitive, weaker person would say, oh, I've got, I've got, you know, my boss hollered at me today and, and this happened and all these stresses and they kind of like just, and they let go with it. And they let go. Where where a strong person will say, you know, my boss hollered at me and it's humiliating and, I, and I'm humiliated and blah, blah, blah. But I have a family to support, dang it. And I just have to keep going. And you just keep moving and pushing forward because you're a strong person. If you were a brain, person. if you were a brain, how would you react to that? Protect this person. <laughs> right. So what the brain does, he explains, is that uh, just like when you go, sw uh, how, you know, if you, you all remember, you used to maybe go to the lake or a swimming pool with your with your parents and they would say, after you eat your lunch, don't jump into the water and swim because what's going to happen? All of a sudden you're going to get a stitch in your side. It's going to really, and they hurt, you know? And the reason is, is because you just ate. So all of your blood now is going to your digestive system and all of a sudden you're jumping in the pool or the lake and you start to swim and all of the, the blood now has to go to your muscles to move and all of a sudden there's a there's a lack of blood where it needs to be in your digestive system and you get that terrible stitch and you you you're in horrible pain and you have to get out of the water if you're lucky you get out of the water so the, the same thing that the brain says stop your uh, attention needs to be elsewhere, not just like, you know, I got a family to support, but you've got some issues. You have a lot of stress. You have a lot of whatever it is that you're feeling that is overwhelming and you've got to stop and you've got to uh, uh, work it out. And so you are just flat on your back or wherever it's going to hit you. you. A lot of times it's back pain and that's what it was with me. And you're, and the, the amazing thing of Dr. Sarno's book is that you don't even have to go to a psychiatrist and find out what it is that's bothering you. You just have to admit that you have the problem, acknowledge it, and then just say, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to let go of the stress and you're going to, you're going to do the right things. And now Tova who helped me because I was in just such a bad place. I couldn't even get there. I was in such a bad place stress-wise. Again, my, my mother was in the hospital. She was dying and there was all this stuff going on all around in a, in a whole circle. And I couldn't get through it. I was in excruciating pain. I was literally, <laughs> I mean, I would, I would say I was, uh, Cave Mavid, like dying. And I I couldn't we even like when you said that word, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> and uh and she helped me focus on the right thing because like even when I was I, I had to do something, um, and the back was just right. You were telling me uh Tamar, instead of saying, you know, I know it's just in my head and I have to do this, darn it. You're saying, Tamar, calm down. Love yourself. Give yourself some you leeway. You were bullying yourself. Like, get yes, down. I was because I know knew it's smart. all up here. So yeah. I, I was saying, Tamar, just get past it, darn it, because you know it's up here. It's not real pain. But you talked to me. Uh, you you talked to me in the right way. Got me thinking on the right path. And here I am today without any back pain. So take it and away. So it's also important. Look, I'm a chiropractor and I do a lot of rehab. I help people with Nordic walking and getting in the water because if people exercise more and were more in touch with their feelings and breathe deeply and understood their parasympathetic nervous system when they breathe, they probably wouldn't get into chronic pain. So I also like to do the preventative part. And some people need a chiropractic adjustment. Maybe you need a few, but I don't really uh, adhere to like needing constant treatment that's, that's um, you know, passive when you need to do more active things. So I do wonderful chiropractic treatment. I'm a very gentle chiropractor. I've been doing it for, you know, 30 something years. And all of that led me to this wanting to help people with the cause of the pain. So sometimes it's an adjustment. Sometimes you need a massage. There's nothing wrong with that. It's 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 also, it's really about, you know, we, we go to the doctor and we think you're gonna heal me. And, and here's an interesting, really point. Pain, it's counterintuitive because pain means something's wrong, but this kind of pain and body mind pain and what we call stress illness, it's, it's not, it's a, it's it's not because something is wrong. It's because there's some um, your brain is interpreting a threat that's not there. And with many diseases that don't get better, it becomes this ongoing drama inside the body and this 
unhealthy relationship in the body. And, and, and I, again, I've met so many people that can, he, like, you can heal disease, you can heal cancer. And I'm not saying you, people who can heal something is wrong with them, but it is a huge responsibility, like what you took tomorrow. And many times you wanted to hang up the phone on me because you didn't want to, you didn't want to look at the girl in the mirror. You want, it's a big responsibility to say, what's going on with me? And why is my body attacking itself? And what can I do? I really want the quick fix. I want a pill. I want to go to the doctor because we all do. We're all human. Well, that's not me. I didn't want to go to the doctor. I didn't want any pills because I knew I knew the answer. I just wasn't focused in the right place. And that's why you didn't want to be vulnerable, vulnerable, which was something a lot of us, we don't want to deal with our feelings. Right, right. I did not want to be vulnerable. This is this is correct. But this but this getting better this way. Is, is a more deeper relationship because as far as I'm concerned and my meeting all these amazing doctors in America, some of them are in the film, Zarna film, that pain is, is, is a message. And it's, it's, it's about how we live with our, how we accept our mortality, how we deal with pain, how we dealt with childbirth, how we saw what we saw growing up. It can be about trauma. It can be about attachment, detachment. The point is, are we willing to take responsibility and look at that part of our life so we can be live pretty much a pain-free life? Or when we have pain, stop and say, okay, I have a headache. I feel tense. Okay, I, I can take an Advil. I'm not against medicine. But I also want to know why this headache keeps coming back. And if the Advil's not working, is there too much? Like, we have to understand our relationship. And that's what pain and disease has taught many people. And it is an opportunity. So for this kind of um, psychophysiological pain, we call it, which is very well documented now, and I can send people the, the, the research, um, and how this has become a habit, like the phantom leg. He, had, he wakes up, his leg is cut off from surgery, God forbid. Anyway, and he has pain in his leg. It's not there. So he needs to be retrained. So part of my work, it's neuroplasticity to help people learn a new relationship, a new habit. This man with the out the leg has to learn a, that his brain, his pain, his brain, his pain is coming from his brain. And that's what you learned. And it was hard. I mean, it was not easy. But in the end, if this happens again, because it may, because you're human and you're a sensitive, strong person, you'll be able to have the tools and insights on either to, to nip it in the butt or to deal with it and not be, because I think you developed a relationship with the pain and you were less scared of it. Wasn't that true? I, I don't know exactly what, but all I know is that you kept me focused on the right thing. And I, I just want to repeat again. I was like, I know it's in my mind. I know it's in my mind, but I was still fighting it. And yeah. you, you had me it look at it in a different way. And by the way, I want to tell everybody, it, it isn't just like, uh, Dr. Tova was telling me, uh, you know, where to focus, but she also gave me physical, um, uh, suggestions on what are the best positions for me to ease the pain, whether I should arch my back or whether I should lean over these things. I didn't even know. And when she told me it made all the difference in the world, I, I mean, where I was screaming in pain, if I had to do something, when she told me to arch my back, all of a sudden it was bearable. I was able to do it. And once you're able to, because the idea is that, you know, the, again, uh, the brain constricts the blood vessels. Like after you go swimming, um, you eat and then you go swimming, the, the blood's not there. So the brain basically squeezes the, the blood vessels tight. So not enough blood is getting there. And that's why massage might help a little because Temporary. you're getting the blood circulation back in there, but it's not going to be the cure well, now because we, right. it's going to keep chronically happening go ahead and, and for example something very important i didn't want you to avoid the pain i wanted you to understand that the pain might have come when you were sitting but that you then then conditioned your brain that whenever you sit you're going to have pain and that became a, a conditional response and now you could sit and i'd call you a few months later and you'd be like yeah i have some pain but you weren't giving it a voice you weren't giving it power it was like there's this sensation in my leg, and it may be something physical, but I know psychologically that's where the healing comes. And that's the beauty of this work. And for people, so for acute pain, we get better, but chronic pain is not normal. And, and, and why I bring up autoimmune disease is because many times autoimmune disease can heal in the same manner by having this healthy relationship. 
and taking responsibility and even things like law of attraction. Some of the people on my Facebook live healed from um, horrible or arthritic diseases. And they, there's a, there's a chemical reaction when you envision yourself going to work. You know, that's why you would get up, you put your makeup on, you put your beautiful tickle on, you look beautiful, even though you're in pain and the body made a different connection. Like I'm healing, I'm not sick. So there's all this, you know, psychological work that we can help people with a language and with, you know, with a, with a, with a habit, it's a new habit. And I say to people at any point, we get up every day, you put a tickle on, you never forget. We brush our teeth. We can learn habits. And we sometimes want to avoid the things that, that have come close to us. Like, that, you know, these personal, about my feelings, how I deal with anger. This is more personal and this triggers us. We're, we want to do, do, do. We're human doings. You know, this is human. I mean, and we happen to live on the, you know, the most stressful star in the galaxy here in Israel, which is another issue. And we're sensitive. We're to We're sensitive. This is true. And, and I, I did um, resist a, a lot of what you were trying to talk me through, because as you said, I didn't want to be vulnerable, but um, you really do need to be completely honest and, and, face these things, but again, not in a defensive way or in an attacking way, but just an accepting way. And it is what it is. And then you just work through it. And, and again, you really helped me a lot on that because I do like to think of myself as a tough, strong person and not as a. Well, and that, and that was look, growing <laughs> up with parents from the Holocaust. There was, there's a, there's a, uh, um, a, a, um, a survival way that we all grow up. We grow up and we learn to be in survival and it works for us. It made you who you are. But then at times I would say to you, and this is the research, you know, oh, I love myself. I take care of myself. I put makeup on, you know, like I love myself. I'm Dr. Tova Goldfine. You know, I love myself, you know, but then there's a way that my unconscious and conscious mind might talk to me that's abusive. And I would catch you and I'd say, well, how are you talking to your wonderful grandkids? How do you talk to your... Like you would never talk to yourself that way. And you would you admit it that you had this negative self-talk that keeps your brain protecting you with enormous inflammation in that leg going all the way down your leg, causing you not to be able to sit. Because you, like most of us, have a difficult time understanding true self-love. And I know this sounds oogie boogie, but this is what the research is showing us. Accepting the pain, accepting that, this is my personality, accepting that I'm tough, and when I need to be, but that now my body needs some self-love because there's some disconnect. So it's kind of fascinating. And it is, it again, it's, I'm talking to doctors. There's one doctor I work with. He's a spinal deformity surgeon. I mean, he's changed spines for a living. And he realized that these people don't need surgery. They need this psychological mind, body, threat, safety kind of relationship. And he stopped doing the work. And I'd love to bring him on your show. I mean, he's, he's, he, he even, I don't like when he bashes doctors because he's, he'll say, I'm going to bash them because his doctors are not aware. I, I, I get it, but they're not trained to ask you tomorrow when you come in with your back pain is I'm going to give you some medication for your back pain, and your sciatica tomorrow, but what else is going on in your life? Cause that was the, the, that was the picturone. That was the solution. So this doctor from California, Dr. David Hanscom, who's this spinal deformity surgeon, is doing this work now. And he himself had 19 symptoms. He couldn't cross the bridge without having a panic attack because we're all human. Point taken is he he understands that the brain, you know, will, will, will perceive a threat and then begin to change physiologically, organically, hormonally. Um, and then we have to learn to bring it safety. And I think you're in your life now, I mean, you'll bring safety to your child in a minute, but when it comes to ourselves, tell me, why do you think it's, it's hard to learn to be loving to ourselves? Why is that? I I just want to tell everybody that uh, before Dr. Tova was talking about how hard it was to sit and it was the worst for me, I was not functioning because I could not sit. It was ex excruciating pain when I sat. So it meant I either lie down and get hardly anything done or you're walking around, but then when you walk around, you get exhausted and then you have to lie down again, but you can't sit. You can't sit at a computer. can't get your stuff done. Um, again, 
I, I still am resisting all these things. Like you're saying, you have to love yourself. Because <laughs> I'll show you the sounds, signs. It sounds you know what so happens like. To, but do you know when you love yourself, what happens to your chemicals? It's a chemical reaction. I'm not saying you're not right. I'm just saying that some people connect easier to that. Again, I'm like this very straightforward, practical person. I'm not into the lovey-dovey stuff so much, okay? But that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It just means that I have a harder time connecting. And that's why you were so crucial because I would not have focused where I needed to focus. Instead, I would have been focusing on, you know, this is from your brain. You know, this isn't real, this pain. You know, your brain, your mind is just doing this to you. So, you know, step up to the plate and just get the job done, which is the exact thing that got me into this place. So basically the reason I wanted you have you, to have you on is because I know that other people are suffering from chronic pain. Sometimes it's your back. Sometimes it's sciatica. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's your shoulder and or or neck or or wherever it might manifest itself. And I just want to let other people know you don't necessarily have to go in for an operation, even if they've done x-rays on you and they're showing a herniated disc and a slip disc and and whatever it is. And they're saying, look, we have to go in and fix this, blah, blah, blah. My mother always taught me, if you go to a surgeon for something, he's going to want to cut because that's what he was trained for. If you go to an MD, he's going to want to prescribe medicine, medication, because that's what he was trained for. If you go to a herbalist, he's going to want to um, give you herbs because that's what he's trained for. So um, there's a saying in Hebrew, I think it's like, Tova Rofim Ligahenam, the best of the doctors <laughs> go, go down below go to hell basically. And, uh, you know, they have a huge responsibility and, but in essence, it's up to us to keep our health and to know what we need to do. And ideally minimal to to be, to be, to be an educated patient, to go into surgery and know that your, your rehabilitation and coming out of there will depend on your relationship with your doctor and your pain and your body. So this, this is work for life. And but that's I- if you need it. You may not need the operation. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And that I, it would be my, again, I'm not a doctor. You know, this is your decision what to do. And you can speak with your own doctors. But to to try to do everything the least invasive. And if it doesn't help, then go to the next step. And then the next and then the next. God forbid you should have to have surgery. But if you do, hopefully, what can I say? Hopefully it'll help you. But I, I, I would recommend... Uh, Dr. John Sarno's book, Healing Back Pain. And to and if it's not uh, working for you, that you should look up uh, someone who does this system. Uh, Dr. Tova, because I, I had even uh, a- a- advised a friend in the States that they, because you do Zoom, right? Like yeah, you I could do help some, them. I do some international work with people because like I have a patient who has tinnitus in America and she's healing from this work because tinnitus is the the brain like on number 10, you know, like the volume's up and she's having some inflammation that she's, that's being created by this anxiety that she's going through something with her family and it's showing up in her ears. Now, this is something very interesting. She, her father just shows you the connection. Her father died after getting a tooth pulled. There was an infection and her father died with a heart attack. She went to the dentist and had a tooth pulled. And she developed this tinnitus. So you just start to put together the pieces and say, look, that makes sense. And she had this enormous health anxiety around this tooth being pulled. And it turned into a, an autoimmune reaction because of her, because of her relationship with her father, because of his dying, because of our fear of death. But however deep it goes, I try to help people help themselves. We don't have to go deep. Some people would help, some people read the book, have a session with me, be like, I get it. I got to look at myself in the mirror. I got to know what triggers me. I'm not going to, you know, when I read the news, I got to be grounded and ready. And I got to understand when I'm, when I'm doing this or when I'm, you know, talking fast or when my eyes are blinking, I'm feeling stressed. And that underneath that, so when we know ourselves, the pain won't come. The pain comes because we're stuffing our feelings. And this again, sounds new age, but it's so unbelievably top of the art science. And that's what I want to prove to people that and many doctors they know this they know about the phantom leg they know about neuroplasticity they know about the the fight and flight thank god when i put my hand on a fire my body goes take back we have a system that works but the system gets hyper vigilant like out of, out of control and we become super sensitive 
And then we get, you know, this is what happened. This is the cycle. So when we know that, and so many people know this, it's just, eh, how do I? So I train people with these insights of how to know themselves. And it's something, it's not complicated. It's a new habit. And I don't, I'm busy. I don't, I don't have time to learn a new habit. Bye. I'm, you know, so it, it is not the quick fix, but it can be, and it can, it, you can ride this wave for the rest of your life and live a good quality life because you understand the relationship with sickness, with health, with mortality. This woman who healed cancer, she was told she was going to die. And she thought, okay, I got to accept my mortality. And her deep acceptance and not fighting allowed her to live and she's living what way beyond. What kind of cancer did she have? Cancer, yeah, like these stories, I have, I have a, over what, what kind of shows. cancer did she have? She had a tumor around her heart. Oh. And I have over 200 broadcasts with people healing. And I always say, these are not Dalai Lamas on the mountain. They're people like you and me tomorrow. I have anxiety. I deal with it. You have anxiety. Anxiety isn't bad. Anxiety, you know what the, the definition of anxiety is? It's, a, it's worrying about something we can't control. And here we go. We all like control. We're human beings. What's the ultimate form of control? Letting go. You know, so this is really the kind of education that we have to, and people will get it. And I'm, I'm blessed to have to meeting amazing people. And so part of it is I always say like, you're going to do the work. I'm just going to direct you because this is the self-healing. And go get chemo. I'm not saying don't go to your doctor, but to, to integrate you know, you're healing with surgery and this work or without surgery, this is this is the ultimate future of medicine. And I think doctors know that. Don't you agree? And I, I just want to say here that um, to be truthful, I have never met Dr. Tova in person. Everything that she helped me with, it was through Zoom or WhatsApp uh, you know, what a, a WhatsApp call, video night call. Night uh, call. So I could have been in Siberia and it, it, it wouldn't matter where I was. So I don't uh, need to physically treat anybody. I do have an office in my home. Um, up, I'm up in Pardesana and I do have an office in my home and um, I'm a wonderful chiropractor and chiropractic's amazing. Massage is amazing. Today I did a cheek Kung class. I mean, I'm all for you being active, but I'm, I'm really... I really want you to be your own doctor. He's always telling me to exercise more. <laughs> and, I, and I don't do it. <laughs> you know, it's all about, it's all about balance and giving back to the the goof. This body's pretty amazing. It, it pretty much takes care of you without you even having to tell it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm so happy right. to see you on the other end of this pain tomorrow. It was, it was rough. It you was, it was I, I have to tell everybody it was the hardest time of my entire life. I had never gone anything through like what I had gone through these last six months. Um, I, I, people who regularly, regularly listen to Israel News Talk Radio notice also that I was doing three shows a week. I cut it down to one because I, I could barely get the one show done. I remember, I couldn't sit. <laughs> so I couldn't sit and do a radio show or anything like I'm doing right now. So um, is there, be before we end, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that maybe I didn't ask you that you feel is really important to help them? You know, like I said, it, it's not everybody wants to go deep and look inside and find out, you know, who the monster is under the bed or sometimes deal with an old trauma that comes up or not accept that their doctor can't heal them. I mean, this is, again, we live we live in a social medicine system. You go in, there's two minutes on the door, you have a doctor, he gets you better and you're fine. But there are medically unexplained symptoms of people not getting better and it turns into, it runs their life. And I don't, so, so, so our body doesn't have to run our life. We can have a relationship and understand. And I think education is important about, um, about our body and, we're trained in this medical world of like, just go to the doctor, he'll fix it. You know, and I know doctors, they, it's sad for them when they can't help people. They also go home and they, you know, they take it home. So it's, it's about the whole system. And I think in general, my message is that healing can happen. Um, disease and chronic pain are not normal. And there's what there's, there's um, a relationship that you can have with your body and your pain and your disease that will help you have a better quality life, will help you understand 
pain is scary. No one likes pain, you know, but to understand brain pain, which is what you had, because how much time, pain do we have? Nothing happened. And if something happened, we get better. I fall off my bike, I get better. Disc herniations do not hurt after three, four months at the most, two months at the most. So this is education and education is out there. We live in it. We live in a virtual world where we can we can read and learn. I mean, talk about who, who has an encyclopedia in their house anymore. So my 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 wish is that everybody take a little responsibility, take some time for themselves, go a little deeper, understand. Um, call me if you want to have a consultation. I give complimentary consultations to see if we want, need to work together. I work with amazing other therapists um, in the field, and I refer to many other doctors who do this work. Who also depending on what you need. Um, and, you know, we're here to, we're, we're, we're a partner. I think that's just a partner with your doctor. Go in there and say, I want your support. I want your support in helping me do this is what and doctors will say. Okay. This is what some, doctors, some, <laughs> well, then you, but you know, this, this is, this is my vision is that you'll attract those kind of doctors because you attracted me. And so I'm here for people. If they're interested, you can find me on the internet. I have a Facebook page. I do a lot of educating. Why don't you give that out now to our listeners? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, um, it's just www.drtovah.com is my website. Um, TMS Roundtable Global is a place where I go live every week with a co-host, an Australian, amazing psychotherapist and, and a nurse. And then I've been going every other week in Hebrew. Um, and we have about 93 Shidareem broadcasts with amazing doctors from Israel talking about chronic pain from the doctor from Rambam Pain Clinic. The director came on and many times from um, the rehab hospital, Beit Levenstein, am I saying it correctly? Wonderful, um, Dr. Hagai Amir, uh, amazing doctors who, who are, you know, really coming forward and saying, we're here to help you with your body and your mind. We're here to help integrate. So that's TMS Roundtable Israel. And I have a few other Facebook pages educating people. And um, I, I think, I think, I think people are starting to get, to get wise. I think COVID was a difficult two years that kind of rearranged our neshamas a bit and had us look at ourselves a little and bit. And the is, is your soul yeah. in English. I think COVID was an interesting time. And it's not surprising that this happened you know, there was COVID, there was your parents, they moved to Israel, they got sick, you know, your daughter. I think we look at the different things in our life and how we're affected and how we respond, you know, to things. And sometimes when we react, that's the downfall. So if we could just learn to respond, there's a different cashier, a different relationship. So mm -hmm. thank you, Tamar. And I, 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 you can always call me in crisis, but I don't think you'll ever be in crisis again. And I'm blessed I was privileged to be able to be on the other end of that Zoom and phone call. Even when you avoided me like the plague because you didn't want to hear the truth. I, I loved you. She would call me and force me to talk to her because I keep thinking I can do this myself. Darn it. <laughs> but she was good. She was persistent. She was amazing. And I really do highly recommend her personally, Dr. Tova, wherever you are, even if you're in Siberia or Antarctica or wherever you are because of technology and the Zoom. Because again, I never met her in person. She's never touched me or given me a <laughs> massage or a treatment, but she helped me by talking me through these things and letting me focus where I need to focus and let go of things that I needed to let go of in order to heal, to have my body heal. And thank God I'm here. I'm you know, back uh, pain free. Thank you, God. Thank you, Tova. And thank you, Dr. John Sarno. And uh, I, I wish that uh, all of you who might be suffering like I did, uh, like I was, and uh, or you ha you know somebody that is, please tell them about Dr. John Sarno's book, Healing Back Pain, and have them be in touch with Tova if they want to talk with something. Again, she said she would give a free consultation, which is very nice of you. And, uh, and then you may want to use her again. I never met her. I only did this over WhatsApp or Zoom or whatever. And so she's she's available to me here in Israel. She's available to anybody around the world. And you should just be free from pain so you can get on with your life and not suffer needlessly. Right. All right.
Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And we should all be pain-free and be able to do our jobs in this world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was 100%. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, everyone, to make sure you can get access to all of our interviews, make sure to hit the subscribe button on both our YouTube and Rumble channels. Your click makes us all stronger. Thanks.